Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to St. Joseph's Catholic Church as we celebrate the 14th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our eyes look to the Lord of mercy, seeking goodness and redemption. Your merciful love, O God, we have received in the midst of your temple. Your praise, O God, like your name, reaches the ends of the earth. Your right hand is filled with saving justice. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. It's good that we can be together and to uh, pray. We invite the Holy Spirit into our the temple that the Lord has made of our bodies through baptism, that the Spirit might dwell in us. My dear brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who in the abasement of your Son have raised up a fallen world, fill your faithful with holy joy. For on those you have rescued from slavery to sin, you bestow eternal gladness. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Zechariah. Thus says the Lord, Rejoice heartily, O daughter Zion. Shout for joy, O daughter Jerusalem. See, your king shall come to you. A just savior is he, meek and riding on an ass, on a colt, the foal of an ass. He shall banish the chariot from Ephraim and the horse from Jerusalem. The warrior's bow shall be banished, and he shall proclaim peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. The word of the Lord. I will praise your name forever, my King and my God. I will praise your name forever, my King and my God. I will extol you, O oh my God and King, and I will bless your name forever and ever. Every day will I bless you, and I will bless, praise your name forever and ever. 
I will praise your name forever, my King and my God. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness. The Lord is good to all and compassionate toward all his works. I will praise your name forever, my King and my God. Let all your works give you thanks, O Lord, and let your faithful ones bless you. Let them discourse of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your might. I will praise your name forever, my King and my God. The Lord is faithful in all his words and holy in all his works. The Lord lifts up all who are falling and raises up all who are bowed down. I will praise your name forever, my King and my God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, you are not in the flesh. On the contrary, you are in the Spirit, if only the Spirit of God dwells in you. Whoever does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. If the Spirit of the one who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, the one who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit that dwells in you. Consequently, brothers and sisters, we are not debtors to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. Blessed are you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth. You have revealed to little ones the mysteries of the kingdom. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. At that time, Jesus exclaimed, I give praise to you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, for although you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned, you have revealed them to little ones. Yes, Father, such has been your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father. And no one knows the Father except the Son and anyone to whom the Son wishes to reveal him. Come to me, all you who, are, who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart, and you will find rest for yourselves. For my yoke is easy and my burden light. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. For those of you that uh, were here on Tuesday, this is the beginning of Mark Seal, so a little bit the same. I'm, I'm just so kind of happy. <laughs> To be a pastor here in, in uh, Bertha at St. Joseph's, it's in a way in my own mind, I mean, granted I've never been married or engaged, uh, I just had the preparation for becoming a priest to kind of compare to, but uh, we've been engaged as parishes now for several months, almost a whole year, so for us to be kind of married together, yay, <laughs> finally, finally we're here. And, uh, you know, some people are like, oh my gosh, it's a whole other parish, Father. How are you going to handle it? You already were busy. What are you going to do? 
I, I really have not felt that way at all uh, since noon on Tuesday when the pastorship came full burden on my shoulders. You know, like I haven't, I haven't felt any of that. In fact, I've been feeling joy and a real light uh, happiness in my heart and a real sense of like, yes, this is where we're supposed to be and, and uh, what we've been waiting to have happen for a number of months. So I'm, I'm just excited. I think this will be good for us together as parishes. Uh, I know it's hard when you've had like 45 priests in the last, no, four to five priests in the last 10 years. Ha <laughs> ha. Uh, but it feels like a lot, and uh, transitioning after transition after transition, uh, even when Father Mitchell departs, I mean, there's always a little grieving, like, oh, gosh, another change, we have to deal with this. But we're really hoping that this is for the long term now, you know, that this is a relationship for many, many years to come. So um, for us to try to do the best we can, it's okay to grieve missing Father Mitchell, he's a great priest of the grief and being gone, and we'll, we'll work on our relationship together as we go. When I look at the readings today, uh, I don't know how you feel, but uh, I always, have you had these moments where you feel like, oh, I just wish I could take back what I said and say something different? <laughs> and you get these moments where you, you've said something to somebody and you're like, ah, if I just would have thought that through a little bit better maybe I would have given a better response. And that notion of thinking things through and using our willpower, that's a really important Christian characteristic. Okay? It's, a, it's a really important part of our Christian life that we take time in our lives with regularity to slow down and think things through. What's most important in my life? Why am I here? What is my life about? What, why am I using the time that I have? And how am I using it for God's greater glory? I think of, um, I don't know if you've seen this TV show. It's on uh, uh, Amazon Prime now. Uh, I, I forget it's on Discovery or History Channel. Um, it's called Alone. Have you ever heard of it? It's a survival TV show. And it's ten people who go off into the woods. They're put up in the Vancouver area, so they're right off the ocean up in Canada territory there. So it's not no picnic, okay? They're, ten, they're put out there, uh, and it's a limitless amount of time. You're there, it's the last person standing. Whoever stays out alone in the wilderness for the longest period of time wins a million dollars. Okay? And they're out there, and they all have a limited amount of supplies they're, they're able to bring with them. And uh, it doesn't, you know, like I've been through a whole season now watching it here slowly over time. And inevitably, like, people leave within the first few days because being alone out in the wilderness is a little maddening. <laughs> because there's no cell phones, there's no internet, there's no computers, there's no entertainment with TV. There's just... You just have to sit all day long, cutting wood, <laughs> building a fire, boiling water, trying to catch fish out of the tidal waters that move in and out, uh, picking up and eating, you know, uh, boiling slugs and eating seaweed and stuff like that. And, you know, for the first couple of days, while you're slowly starving to death because of the lack of calories and everything else, it's you know, it, it, they're doing okay, but after a while, it's like they start missing their families. They start missing birthdays that are happening back home or a, a, a holiday like Thanksgiving that they miss over. And they just start feeling more and more and more and alone. And uh, eventually, they all take turns tapping out and, and escaping. Now, the, I bring all of this up because there's something about sitting in the quiet that deeply affects us for the good. Because you watch those folks as they're there out in the wilderness alone for a while. Yes, they feel the loneliness. Yes, they feel uh, that somehow the, the distractions are gone. But what happens is they start to see themselves and where they're at. 
And they start asking the deeper questions of life. Why am I here? Why am I doing this career that I've been doing for the last 15 years? Why have I neglected my family so much? I, I love being around my family. Why don't I spend enough time with them? And they go into these deeper questions and they end up having these spiritual experiences talking to the Lord or having these beautiful sunrises or sunsets and just the gratitude that comes out of them. Now, granted, uh, for a number of us as farmers and people who live on the land, you're saying, well, okay, that's what I call Tuesday, Father. Okay, well, great. But inevitably, in, in the American world that we live in, there's still kind of like this the busyness, 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 busyness. And we can fill the gaps of time with the radio or television or other distracting things. And we have a tendency as a culture to avoid those long, drawn-out, deeper moments. So for all the kids in the room, when mom and dad force us to come to mass early, and we have to sit there in the view, and it's so boring. <laughs> Does that ever happen? No. Okay, well, good for you. Because for me, it was boring growing up, okay? My parents did music ministry, and so we'd go every time we went to church. I'd be there like an hour early waiting for Mass to start. It's like, ah, it's so boring. The praise is just coming. You know, so what's happening on the inside is we're having to face ourselves, aren't we? We have to face our feelings of boredom. And we have to invite Christ, we have to invite Jesus into that space with us. And if we have grown up in our life feeling as if somehow that's a scary thing, you know, to invite Jesus in to be present there, it might feel like Jesus is just going to come in and start attacking and going, you need to fix this, you need to fix this, you need to fix this. Because that, that happens to me. When I just sit in silence for a while... I start getting this voice in my head which starts saying, you're not doing this well, you need to do this, you need to do this, you need to do this. And it's like this negative voice in my head telling me all the things I'm not doing right. Is that God? What do you think? You think that's God's voice? One of the kids. Anybody think that's God's voice? Talking negative why? Who do you think it is? You're shaking your head. Nope, it's not God. What do you think? So if it's not God, is it your voice? No. Whose voice might it be then? What do you think? One of the kids. It's not God, it's not me. Who do you think it might be? Say it. There you go. It could be Satan, it could be any of the demon, demons, right? The angels, the fallen angels, they can, they're able to talk on the inside of our heads. And so there they are. And does God, does God speak in a discouraging way that says mean things about us? Never. Never. The Lord is always speaking in this uplifting way. Come back to me. Be close to me. Spend time with me. You can do this. We can get rid of those parts of the life that are distracting you know, you heard that um, story in the first reading of how the, the king comes riding into Jerusalem and into Zion. Rejoice heartily, O daughter Zion. Shout for joy, O daughter of Jerusalem. See, your king is coming to you. He's meek and riding on an ass, on a colt, the fold of an ass. <gasps> Father said a dirty word in church. It means donkey. Don't worry. Okay, so he's riding on a donkey. Why a donkey? Why not a horse? Why would a king, why would a king ride in on, on a, a donkey and not a horse? Because in that time period, if you rode in on a horse, you were a warrior going into battle. You need a big, fast, sturdy animal to just get you into battle fast, and a donkey's not going to do that. <laughs> but a donkey is able to climb up hills really easily. And it's a little bit easier to ride on. And so a king, when he's just going to take a stroll through his kingdom, he's not going into battle, he's going to ride on his donkey. And so it's this gentle movement through his kingdom. 
And this is the important thing. When we're discerning the difference between the voice of the evil one and the evil spirits who are saying negative things to us and the encouraging words of the king, this is what Jesus does. He does not come to destroy us, but rather he enters in very gently and invites us to something greater. So when you sit in the silence, know the difference. When you're sitting in and you're asking God, Lord, what do you want me to do? And all these anxious thoughts come racing in. Is that God? No, it's not. God is in that quiet place. You have to get past the anxiety, past the, the frustration and the anger, to hear Jesus saying, bring your problems to me. Join with me. Come to me, all who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon your shoulders. So Jesus, you know what a yoke is, right? A yoke is when you, when you tie two horses together or two cows together, you yoke them up together. It's like when you do three-legged races and you tie one of your legs together with your neighbor and you try to run with only three legs instead of four legs. It's hard, isn't it? You have to learn to walk together or learn to run together. And Jesus is saying... When you go to Mass, when you're going into your quiet place of prayer at home, when you're going to talk to me, tie yourself to me. Bring your problems with me because I'm strong when you feel feel weak. And I faced even the worst things by dying on the cross for me. So you bring your problems to me. Bring the difficulties of life to me. And we'll, we'll carry them together. And I don't know about you, but when I get super busy, I, don't, I forget to talk to Jesus. I forget to ask him to do that. And so this bringing together of ourselves, this is what St. Paul is referring to about having that spirit of Christ dwell within you. So one of the things that I do when you see me at Mass, I'll kneel down behind the altar after I've received Holy Communion, and you, you've all received Communion, those who've received and we're, we're kneeling down there. And for all the kids who wonder what his father thinking when he's kneeling there and praying, I, I do two things, okay? The first thing, if you've heard me say this before, is that I, I, in my heart, I try to remember a picture of Jesus or see an image of the crucifix of Jesus in my mind. And I look at Jesus the best I can in my imagination. And I try to make eye contact with him. And I try to tell Jesus, I love you, Jesus. And I try to mean it with everything I can with my heart. Because I've got all the rest of Mass. I'm distracted. I'm trying to lead everybody in prayer. I'm just so distracted. And I get to that one moment of communion. It's just me and him at that moment with everybody else praying in quiet. And I just, I love you, Jesus. And then I try to listen with my imagination and hear him saying the same thing back to me. I love you, Father Aaron. Why not? Right? He can say that. And then in that moment, I, if I can remember to do so, if I'm struggling with distractions or other things in my heart, I'll just lay them down to Jesus and say, Jesus, in this moment of communion, I give you that hard conversation I had yesterday or the thing I'm worried about this afternoon of going and participating in. I, I give you this. I give you that. I'm distracted. I don't feel right about this. I give that to you. And it's just this beautiful moment of letting Jesus take over. So this is what we ought to do, okay? Every time you go to Mass, try to be a little early and spend time in the quiet. And even if there's music playing, that we're just like putting ourselves in that zone of being one with God. And then throughout the Mass, as, as it is in the quiet moments at home when we're praying, that we're trying to find that moment of communion with God. Bring your burdens to Him. Be united with Jesus. Allow the Holy Spirit to be present and worshiping in your soul.
There we go. All right. We'll recite our creed together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess in one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We now bring our needs and our prayers before our Heavenly Father. For the intentions of our Holy Father, Pope Francis, during this month of July, that today's families may be accompanied with love, respect, and guidance, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the members of the Church, that they may be filled with the Spirit and recommit themselves as good stewards, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the leaders of the nations, that they would promote life, peace, and justice, and work together for the common good. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are weary of the burdens of daily life, that they may find support and solace in the love of Jesus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to the pandemic that afflicts our world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our dear departed ones, and for Darlene Clement, for whom this Holy Mass is being offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those whom we have promised to pray, the prayers listed in our Book of Intercessions, and those we hold in the quiet of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we are grateful that you have called us through your Son into relationship with you. Help us in the silence of our lives to make room for you, to yoke ourselves to your Son Jesus in everything that we do. We ask all of this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine, work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God of Pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May this oblation dedicated to your name purify us, O Lord, and day by day bring our conduct closer to the life of heaven through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashion for us a remedy out of mortality itself, that the cause of our downfall might be the means of our salvation, through Christ our Lord. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord. And all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church 
and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Anne, St. John the Baptist, St. Cloud, Saint, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your, in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Donald, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
<coughs> Come to me, all who labor and are burdened, and I will refresh you, says the Lord.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that having been replenished by such great gifts, we may gain the prize of salvation and never cease to praise you through Christ our Lord. Amen. That's, again, really great. Uh, I'm just enjoying already being here, and I know we're going to spend a lot of time. Sorry that COVID is... Uh, messing with all of the socializing stuff we would otherwise normally do together. I'm just going to be processing in and out of the sacristy when we do masses. Um, that way I can, don't have to wear a mask. I can just <laughs> go in and out real quick, okay? Uh, but we'll make sure that we get to greet one another and get to know each other over time. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Does this water have to go down into the other sink? Yeah, my, my rule is anything that can be used, that's used in the sanctuary, even a drinking glass, water goes down the sink. Just for safety.